Hi, it's Heather Ordover of the Craftlet Podcast, and I wanted to let you know two things that are new to me that I thought you might be interested in too. The first one is an app that I found out about that our library allows us to use or through which we can use our library cards. That app is called Canopy. Canopy is a streaming service, so it has a lot of movies, audiobooks, things like that. But it also has movies that I couldn't get anywhere else, which seems kind of odd. But the movie that I could get that I really wanted to share with you is a movie version, a new movie version, new to me, 2023. It is now March 2024. A new movie version of The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. We just finished listening to, reading, going through The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas on Craftlet. And this always happens. I am not reading The Hollywood Reporter and Variety and saying, hmm, I should start doing The Three Musketeers because there's going to be a movie coming out right around the time that we'll finish the book. I do not do this, but the universe keeps doing it to us. We call it the Craftlet Zeitgeist because all of a sudden, once everybody knows the text well, all of a sudden there's like, hey, look, now you can go watch it and see if they did it right. I'm here to tell you with the French version, which is called The Three Musketeers, and then it's like part one, D'Artagnan. So it is the same part of the book that is taken up by like the Michael York, uh, Richard Chamberlain, Oliver Reed version that came out in 73, 74. So the 1973, 1974 version of the movie got the slapstick right, and it, I think it got the relationships between the guys right, and it, it stuck pretty closely to the book, but it's only like the first third of the book, and that same third is being covered in this section, D'Artagnan. They are going to do the rest of the book. It's already got a trailer out, I think, and that part is called Milady. So if you have listened to The Three Musketeers with me, you know exactly what's coming and why it is called Milady. I'm not going to make a judgment call at all about the costuming. They definitely had a look they were going for. It appears to me that they decided when they were going to, I don't know, look at a history book and see what people were wearing at the time. And then they were also not going to pay attention to what was being worn at the time because there anything worn by milady i just look at it and go well no but yeah if you're trying to do characterization through costuming rather than time accuracy through costuming then they nailed it she is gorgeous and i love this actress she's amazing ava ava green i think I don't know any of the other actors. I don't see a lot of French films because it's hard for me to read subtitles if I'm doing something like, you know, knitting, crocheting, stitching, painting. It's just hard for me to, to read the subtitles at the same time. I did not have a, a hard time following this at all. Even my French, which is not good, I could keep up. And I could tell when they didn't translate it exactly right, which is kind of fun. So if you even have high school French, you'll have a good time with this. The humor, mwah, oh, D'Artagnan. Everybody has a zinger at some point. D'Artagnan though, God, he, he is threading that needle between, I am really good at being violent and I am a really charming guy. And I am a fearless Gascon from Gascony, and no one can tell me what to do. He's playing it right up the middle. It's beautiful on his part, plus he's adorable. The other three musketeers are considerably older than they should be, except Porthos. And by the way, kudos to them. They, instead of making Porthos a joke because he's foppish and he's wearing very fancy schmancy, well, costumes, because when D'Artagnan runs into him, he knocks his cape off and shows off that this new tabard that he's wearing that's all fabulous and glittery is cardboard in the back. The thing that I thought was incredible, and I am not commenting on whether this is uh, true to life or a particularly good job as far as sword fighting in cinema history, I will leave that up to the professionals who, who have great channels and really know their stuff and are able to 
you know, break down the Princess Bride fight and, uh, and talk about it. And by the way, I got to see Rob Reiner talk about the Princess Bride. Back when it was released, I was at UCLA. It was not doing well in the theaters. And so he wanted to get some feedback. So he came and he showed it to UCLA students. We went nuts for it. We couldn't figure out what the heck was wrong with anybody else, except that it kind of doesn't fit the model for back then, what people expected. But the, the sword fighting, Rob Reiner had told us the story about how they'd been trained separately. Carrie Ells and Mandy Patinkin had been trained separately, learning their fight. And so when you see them kind of being competitive, when they finally are fighting together, when they finally get to do the scene to film it, that's real competition. They were they were having fun. So anyway, I have no idea. I have no idea how these guys trained. I have no idea who trained them. It is certainly not something that shows up in our press, but wow. Historically, I have had moments watching film, certainly watching off-Broadway and local amateur theater. I've had many times where any kind of fight that happens on stage pulls me out of the action because I'm actually afraid for the actors. If they're out of control enough, one of the actors is not constrained enough to be safe to fight with on stage. And so I'm worried about the other actor getting hurt because I've seen it happen. I have never seen sword fighting like they have in the first section, which is in the book, of D'Artagnan getting his, his new gig. He's not going to be a musketeer. He's going to be a cadet. Fine. He goes to head down and see the guy about becoming a cadet and on the way notices the guy who tried to kill him early on in the film, like in the first scene. Races like a bat out of hell to try and catch up with this guy so he can challenge him to a duel. And in the process runs into first Athos, who he insults and says, meet me at 11. I'm going to have a duel with you. And D'Artagnan's like, absolutely. Keeps running, barrels straight into Porthos. That's the only time when I wondered if the kid playing D'Artagnan actually got hurt. He takes a, a fall up against a table that worried me. That said, he seems fine. He insults Porthos because he didn't apologize properly. And Porthos, who is queer coded, which made me so happy. It was a really, really smart decision in many ways to do this with Porthos. But he he also, you know, kicks ass and he's going to now duel with D'Artagnan at noon in a different location. And then D'Artagnan keeps running. And of course, he has an interaction with Aramis where he insults him in a way that is actually not insulting Aramis as much as it is compromising a woman who is not there. We don't see her. He challenges D'Artagnan to a duel and D'Artagnan says, sure, when? And he said, noon. And D'Artagnan's like, I'll be there. And then he stopped and he went, uh, how about one? And Aramis laughs and says, yeah, good luck, kid. Okay, take the extra hour. I'm still going to kill you. D'Artagnan shows up to fight. All three guys wind up being there because these are the three friends, Athos, Porthos, and Aramis. You can listen to the Craftlet podcast to find out if which, which of those names are real, why some of them are real. We talk about all of that in the, the episodes when we cover the Three Musketeers, especially early on. In the book, at this point, as they're about to probably kill D'Artagnan, and he's fine with it. He's like, you challenged me. It's, it's a fair duel. And they're like, when did you show up? And he's like, oh, this morning. <laughs> when did you get to Paris? This morning. Great. The Cardinal's men show up. They're not supposed to be dueling. So the Cardinal's men think that they can take these guys. In the book, it is a contained set. It's in a, a plaza, very much like the scene in the 1973 version. That's what it reads like in the book. They didn't do this here. They decided to really go all out. And the guys are like fighting, I don't know, 15 different people. I have never seen sword fighting like this ever. Part of it is because they have an extraordinary steady cam guy, and they also are using drones. So I think there's only two cuts in this entire sequence. 
which means they play for about three or four minutes without a cut. The choreography, the fight choreography goes on over this entire like wooded glen with all these trees and there's gunshots and there's sword fighting. Yes, there were guns, they are musketeers. They usually use swords, but they have muskets, they have guns for when there's actual, we need to protect the king war stuff. But if they're just walking around themselves, they have their swords. That's correct. There is a stunt that D'Artagnan or D'Artagnan's stunt double, I have no idea. It sure looked like him. There's a, a stunt that he does pretty early on when he first gets a horse and he manages to try and ride away. I have never seen someone get pulled off a horse this way. I'm not going to spoil it more than that. I'm just going to say keep your eyes open. The rest of the film I thought was really marvelously done. I thought that the way they did Louis XIII was extraordinarily smart because he's, yes, he's a king and yes, he's a Louis, which means, you know, the gene pool is not going to be great for long. But he was trying to be a good king. Louis the Just is what he, he wanted to be called, what he liked to be called. He, he wanted to be fair and thoughtful, but he's also kind of a whiny baby boy. This guy, again, threads that needle beautifully. Queen is fantastic. Constance Bonacieux, she does not have a husband, which makes the morality of, of her relationship with D'Artagnan much less complicated. But I, I was impressed all the way through. Every change that they made to the actual original text, and there were plenty, so good, so worth it. So if you have a chance, whether it's on Canopy or otherwise, please consider taking a moment to go watch the 2023 French Three Musketeers with subtitles if you speak English and not French, like me. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Enjoy. We will have another essay that we're posting soon, and we will be starting Emma very soon. End of this month, beginning of April, we will start Jane Austen's Emma. I am so excited. I cannot wait. It is much more nuanced than I realized in the beginning. So I think it is a perfect craftlet book because it's one of those that we all think we know, but we don't know it. There's more there to pick apart and take a look at. Very excited. All right. You take care of yourself. I will talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye.